So I've been asked for a mini tutorial on path tracing for the splash asset. It does work, so it uses world position offset and we can see that that is supported in Unreal 5.1. Uh, you just need to make sure you switch evaluate world position offset on for the meshes. Uh, if we go into the blueprint, we make sure that this is switched on and it should work. Now here I've just, for this example here, I've just gone in and taken the meshes from the blueprint and just placed them in the scene for ease of use when de debugging. Um, yeah, that's it. Um, if you have a project, this isn't a tutorial about how to enable path tracing, but once it's uh, enabled, it's basically just this, and then you've got it working technically. Done. Um, but unfortunately, when I looked at this uh, mid splash, for example, it did look pretty blotchy. Um, and although it looked okay for rasterization, which is the default rendering of Unreal, um, when I went into path tracing, it looked kind of blotchy. I've pre adjusted it so it looks okay and it looks pretty similar to what you see in rasterization. Uh, this one, I should also mention that you, within the blueprint or within your debug setup, you might just want to make sure that the phases are matching correctly as, as well. Otherwise you might get something a bit funny like that. Um, so this one, I hope that I've got the material's pretty close to the default. Um, likely they're exactly as the default. Um, so let's have a look. And you'll see that this is kind of splotchy and um, blobby and doesn't, doesn't look very good. Um, as similar to, to the issues I was facing with the mid-size one when, when I first enabled path tracing. So what you so what I'll do here is I'll just isolate this main one here which seems to be the main culprit I'll go into the material and I'll start with opacity I think this will be the main thing and I'll switch this way down so we're getting um, more refraction and less uh, opacity um, and switch up the uh, uh, might increase the refraction a bit. Um, next main thing would be uh, drop scale. This is a pretty major one, so let's decrease that. Yeah, I think that's looking much better already. Um, okay, I think the default was actually much higher for this, maybe something like that. Uh, well, not that much. Um, that was looking quite streaky, so um, when I first enabled path tracing, so I'll make sure I keep that quite low. I mean, this might look, some of these things might look much more acceptable in, in motion rather than, than still. Um, unfortunately, it will take a long time for these samples to, uh, translucent samples to accumulate. So I will, I'm afraid I don't have the patience for that, but um, I might just decrease the drop scale a little more. And I think that Let's just maybe increase the opacity just a little tiny bit. No, that's too much. Okay, that will suffice. Uh, now I'll switch on the mist. Uh, that opacity might be okay in motion, but it's looking a little bit strong. Yeah for a still, for a uh, still camera. So let's um, pretend this is concept art and we'll decrease that. Okay, and now I'll come in, look at the white water, not too bad, but that could be smaller, I guess. 
this is uh, all up to you, of course. Um, and I'll depress that a little bit and I'll increase this a little bit more. Okay. I think that's pretty good and I've got a knock on the door. So, yep, that's how you do path tracing with the splash acid. Thank you.